Coming up on SEO Lunch, Google announces Google Web Designer. Find out how it affects your small business. Stick around to the end of the episode and you'll grab our resource of the week, When to Tweet. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of SEO Lunch. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Dan. This is the show where we take some of the top news in inbound from inbound.org, smash them together and give you the top SEO web marketing news of the week. As always, you can subscribe to us at slocumstudio.com slash subscribe for a wonderful mail uh, report. And as well as subscribe right on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button for us, please. We're almost at a thousand. Almost it's so thousand. exciting. I can't wait for that. And who and why and when is this show sponsored by this show today, anyway, is sponsored by our latest real estate theme. It is a WordPress responsive real estate theme. Check it out. SlocumStudio.com slash WordPress themes and you can get a look. See. And tell us what you think. Let's hop into the news. Absolutely. So our, our concept of the week uh, this week is going to be search engine optimization. I don't think we talk about optimizing your clientele enough. This comes from Rob Carpenter on Evergage.com. Introduction to marketing and the marketing process, uh, LearnQ.com. We'll take a step back uh, from the hypotheticals and creatives. Uh, what is your product? Who's your audience? We're going to talk about that. Uh, and then we have an infographic, uh, why you should repurpose content. This comes from Laura Nunnery at Active Internet Marketing. Should you, should you not? We'll discuss. Google will soon launch Google Web Designer, a free HTML5 developer tool for creating web apps, sites, and ads. And then Christina Kledzik on Distilled is going to go over how to choose the right mobile platform for your business. We'll discuss. Resource of the week, how to share your tweets at Optimal Times Follower Wonk plus Buffer Team Up. It's a really cool like uh, marriage. And, show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so let's let's get right to the right right started here. So our concept of the week this week uh, is how to use, it's on this article, how to use data to beat your competition. Mm -hmm. um, but what I really drew from it was that the optimization aspect of search engine optimization. And I think that we keep talking about over the past couple of weeks, how it's becoming sort of a bad word and how, you know, SEO Moz changed just to Moz to sort of reflect that change in sort of the, 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 the flow of the market. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the optimization is still very important uh, personally. And it, this, this article gives you a few little resources on sort of looking at your you know, sort of marketing, like an essential marketing, looking at who your audience is, looking at who your major players are and sort of marketing to them specifically over others. Yeah. And I think one of the, the key points of this, especially like the whole, like the industry as a whole, correct me if I'm wrong, audience, but <laughs> I think SEO in terms of SEO in Google is mm -hmm. what's changing mm -hmm. because of like their... Uh, rating factors right. and, and ranking factors and formulas because that's all changing but there's so much other data to optimize because now there are so many other choices right twitter facebook all these other platforms so many social media all these platforms. Other, yeah and like you, you're creating apps you're doing podcasts we're looking at statistics and podcasts or youtube yep. views like it's not just i need to be on mm -hmm. the front front page anymore so how do you use this data? How many likes am I getting over here? How many comments am I getting from this forum? You know, yeah, and if eighty percent of your likes are coming from Facebook, why? And you know, nobody's talking to you on Twitter. Why are you even bothering with Twitter? Right. Take that time that you're spending trying to get that audience that's just not going uh, going for you on Twitter, and just spend more time with Facebook. Exactly. Good stuff. Good stuff. Cool. Uh, along the same lines. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the next article, which is introduction to marketing and marketing process. Um, as somebody who's into marketing myself, um, I, I think that personally, a lot of a lot of our time is spent talking about these creative uh, options that you have when you're looking to, you know, start with your 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 uh, internet uh, presence. And I think that this is from LearnQ.com. I think they just take a back to basics approach and just say, you know, what's your product? Mm -hmm. Who is your audience? I wrote down in the notes here who's going to pay the most. How do we reach them? Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very very cool like you know financial analytic report kind of style mm -hmm. uh, article here that just kind of goes back and says, listen, ultimately, when you're looking to sell a product, you have to think from from the base level from decades and decades and decades ago of here's my, you know, what is my product? Who's my target market? And how am I going to reach them? Right. And, you know, and the other thing about this is where the, I'll, I'll let me play the devil's advocate. What I don't agree with. Well, it's not that I don't agree, but no, here's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. If you're a startup, yep. small business owner. Like this is great. Like yep. you have this foundation, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. 
But there's so much in this and planning that you're yep. probably only going to grab like 20% of this and just right. roll with it, right? I hear but it's saying. good to have this foundation right. and plan ahead. I think somebody looking at this might be like, oh my God, there's so much stuff like segmentation and targeting, right. positioning, differentiation. What am I supposed mm -hmm. to do here? Look, just break it down to the real ground level. Who are you going after? How are you right. going to reach them? And don't get overwhelmed with all of this data mm -hmm. to reference back to the other one. Yep. Find the platform that's working for you now. Mm -hmm. Might be Twitter. Might just be email newsletters. Mm -hmm. Focus in on that. And I would say even, I agree with you, but I'd also say that going even more macro mm -hmm. than looking at specific social media platforms before you even do anything. Good point. Step back and say, what's going to happen here? You know, especially if you're a business who's, you know, low on cash or you're, you know, a small business and you have to you have a certain budget for marketing to say, listen, we're going to be spending X amount of dollars on this. And for this, for Y amount of profit, we have to make sure that obviously we're going to meet, we're going to make our ends meet there with the amount we're paying. So. Touche, Swordsman, <laughs> you win that one. Uh, so, uh, let's go to the next guy here. Uh, and when you are kind of going on that, that tirade and you're, 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 you're going through and, and, and marketing to people, is it cool to repurpose content? Mm -hmm. This next article is an infographic specifically, which again, I'm not a huge fan of infographics anymore personally, but it kind of goes through at the bottom percentages as, uh, as well. Um, for, you know, taking the same piece of content you have and publishing it on Facebook and then making a video for it and then making a blog post on your website. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? And I was wondering what your, what your thought was on that. Yeah. So this is like one of those, like, uh, it's like the black hat SEO. It's kind of mm -hmm. like the same thing in like content marketing world. Like, should you be repurposing other people's content? No, and actually, what? and actually I'd say that in this case, and in the case of the definition of repurposing content, we're actually talking about your own content. Oh, okay. so so we're so this article specifically covers, um, and I know we've talked before about that, yep. but this article specifically covers taking your own content. Gotcha. So I, you know, for example, we put a video out for 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 SEO lunch. Mm -hmm. Would it benefit somebody now, or would it help us if we had an article? Mm. That was also about the same stuff we talked about mm -hmm. today. Like we took the tool that we're going to talk about later and made a whole article about how to use it, for example. Is that something? Yeah, cool? absolutely. I mean, this uh, this very show is ripe for repurposing yeah. because we're right. re repurposing content and then mm -hmm. we can repurpose the content yeah, that we've yeah. repurposed. Yeah. <laughs> Super meta. Sure. We're looking at 100 mirrors at yeah, the same time, sure. the kind of thing. Yeah, you don't uh, know. You can't see behind us. But yeah. There's just a whole bunch of mirrors here. It's really tough to look at the camera. It's a new angle, too, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Uh, and we don't have any guests on the show this week. We did it last week. Let us know about how you, uh, what you thought about that. Anyway, back to repurposing the content. Yeah, yeah I think it's, uh, you know, it's a must because you can only put out so much new stuff without right. like forgetting to go back and kind of recycle what you talked right. about. Um, and I think it's great. I mean, you turn one post into a series of posts. Um, you can turn one series of posts into a whole how-to video demonstration. You can mm -hmm. turn that into an educational program. Yep. There's so much stuff that you can do. Um, and if you're thinking about doing that, it's a great way to relieve the stress of, yes. oh my God, I got to think of something new. Yeah. Right. Go just back. say, here's an article. Yeah. Go, yeah. Go back and find out what you talked about even a yeah. year, two years ago and pull it. I do it all the time. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's a good practice. Yeah. Um, so uh, the next article is, and I had to do a double take on this one. Mm -hmm. So when I first read, Google will soon launch Google Web Designer, a free HTML development tool for creating web apps, sites, and ads. This comes from Frederick Lardnoise on TechCrunch. Um, I thought... Google's entering the CMS market. Uh-oh, WordPress. Uh-oh, Drupal. Um, but reading on about it, if you are a, a small business or something and you just want to create like an advertisement or, or an app, you want to create like a basic simple app that can be utilized on multiple websites, um, HTML5 is a very sort of open source and open form uh, tool that's compatible with, with the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can just take, take your take your app or whatever, your advertisement, and put it where you'd like. Mm. So this is a cool tool for that kind of thing. Yeah, and let's talk about repurposing content. Yeah. Uh, two years ago, mm -hmm. and this is not a surprise to anybody in my space, uh, my, in my, yeah, yeah. your space, in my, in this, not, not in Justin Timberlake's, uh, yeah, web design, yeah, yeah. web development, <laughs> web marketing. Um, you know, I predicted that, you know, websites are going to be a thing of the past. Right. You know, I think that there are going to be, you know, your typical, Small business website, see you later, bye bye. It's not going to exist anymore. Right. Um, it's going to be done through apps. It's going to be done through video. It's mm -hmm. going to be there's going to be these major reset because all Google's interested in, especially if you go back and look at our Google I/O episode, yeah. right, right, right. All they're interested in now is about connecting data. Mm -hmm. I don't care about your beautiful looking site. I just want to know where that where right. that location exists. Right. I want to know what time of day you're open and closed. I just want to pull that data out 
and spit it into the into huge Google Maps, Google or, Maps application pool. Right. Um, and I just the other day, last week, told Scott, one of our developers, yep. the co-host of Fresh, uh, Fresh, Fresh Dev, Fresh yep. Web Dev, that Google is going to jump into the space of creating websites yep. because they're going to want people to create websites the way that they want to crawl them. It's super scary. Yeah. Cue the impending doom, clouds of lightning, and hell <laughs> arising from the earth. Uh, but this is what's going to happen. And if you are still on, uh, on board uh, for creating your own website, uh, choosing the right mobile site might be an interesting thing to think about before you go and make your website. So Christina Kledzik on Christina Kledzik on Distilled talks about it, and it's just a it's a pretty short article, but it's cool. It kind of gets you thinking. There's a little flow chart there, it gets you thinking about what uh what kind of way do I want to design web? Uh, do we want to just use a CMS like a WordPress and just use a responsive theme? We talk about theme frameworks and stuff like that on our other show, Press This, um, or do I want to completely custom design my site for mobile? Or Something we don't really we haven't really talked about too much. Do we want a completely separate website, like mm. a mobile.twitter.com, mm. for example, yeah. for your website presence with its own subdomain? Yeah, I think it all. It, what's your mobile strategy? Mm. Um, you know, how important is it? How much time do you have? What's your budget? Mm -hmm. uh, you answer those three simple questions, <laughs> as simple as they are, and then you make your decision. A lot of folks on WordPress can get resp responsive themes uh, that just work on your phone or tablet or no matter where yep. it is. Uh, or you have options of creating that unique, specific mobile site. If you're starting from scratch, you ask yourself the question, how important is my mobile site? Mm -hmm. Am I going to do more business on mobile right. than I am on the desktop? If the answer is yes, you start from designing the mobile, working your way up to the desktop. Sure. Um, so what's your goals? What's your plans? What are you selling? And this is a great resource to, to look at that. Absolutely. And, and kind of make that decision or help you make that decision. But our resource of the week is how to share your tweets at optimal times, follower wonk and buffer team up. So follower wonk owned by Moz, um, as of what you said a few months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and then buffer, of course, a very prominent um, app developer to kind of take sort of social media and kind of reorganize it for yeah, you. Yeah, so you uh, buffer, uh, I think we talked about once or we, twice yeah, on the yeah, show. Yeah. Uh, great little app, sits in your browser or on your mobile phone. You plug in a, in a URL and you can tweet it out or post it to your Facebook, whatever, mm -hmm. at a specific time. Right. So what they're trying to marry now is Follower Wonk, which is a, a Twitter social media profiling tool, mm -hmm. who is Slocum Dan, who is Matt Report, um, kind of look at that and say, when do these guys tweet? Right. Uh, you know, and if you're using Buffer, how, how do we match this mm -hmm. up so that when they're online, right. you're posting at the same time, so you're getting yeah. your most visibility. Sure. Interesting way of doing it. Um, Jump into the comments too of that article because there's some other good yeah, resources absolutely. in there. Looking but through some a, of it right now. This yeah. is a great uh, this is a great article to kind of optimize your tweets, which but we love. What it basically does is it finds out the best time to to send your tweets based on your followers and what they're doing, and you basically it gives you this little schedule, and you just say this is what I want to post, and it will schedule the posts for you and post it at the optimal time that your followers are on Twitter posting when you normally post. Yep. Things like that. It's really cool. So that's a wrap. That's a great, great, great articles for the week. Mm -hmm. um, we want to hear from you. We want to hear how you uh, consume this this uh, mm -hmm. SEO lunch. Do you like what we're talking about? Do you like how we structured it? What yeah. do you want to see differently? Absolutely. Uh, you have just seen maybe the last episode with a guest. Do you want to yeah. see more guests on the show? We had some audio and some technical difficulties, yeah. but we'll fix that. <laughs> uh, aside from that, what do you think? How can we make it better? We're almost getting to a thousand fans, so we do want to keep growing. We want to keep uh, delivering you awesome Absolutely. stuff. We want to marry SEO to WordPress and do all this fun stuff for you. Let us know. SlocumStudio.com slash subscribe. SlocumStudio.com slash blog. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. <laughs>